This is Whitbourne Hall on the Bromyard Road to Hereford. And there's quite noisy traffic actually, so I'm going to talk over on the voiceover. But I'll just show you that we're coming to see not only the beautiful Easter Saturday weather, but I'm also going to look at Brinksty Village Living Shop because they have um, all sorts of things to buy. Just going back to Whitbourne Hall, in 1996 I think it was, I came out here to view a property, a, a small house on the estate which was attached to the hall and I decided we decided against it because we thought that uh, it'd be quite far out and also you had to uh, pay a lot of ground rent so it put me off slightly and also communal living but it has a fantastic uh, wedding venue and you were part of this uh, environment where you looked after all the grounds and and made sure that uh, the great hall was ready for weddings it was quite fascinating to see and uh, it's such a, a different life to where I was living and I really appealed at the time but uh, yeah I didn't I didn't go for it and uh, in, in hindsight that was a good thing <laughs> a mix of vintage wares we didn't get anything today but I uh, haven't been for a long time so uh, yeah you really need to spend time mooching about because uh, you might find the odd little bargain
These are the fields opposite Algar's birthplace entrance. And the lovely rapeseed is out on Easter Saturday. In 1902, Elgar was due to conduct a coronation ode to the new king, Edward VII. This was eventually cancelled due to the king's illness. Elgar wrote, Don't for heaven's sake sympathise with me. It gives me three blessed sunny days in my own country instead of stewing in town. I was biking out in Herefordshire yesterday and the news reached me at a little roadside pub. I said, Give me another pint of cider. I'm deadly sorry for the king, but that's all. son of a farmer's daughter and a piano tuner, Edward Algar was born on the 2nd of June 1857. His breakthrough came in 1899 with the composition of the Enigma Variations. From humble origins in class-divided Victorian society, Algar put Britain back on the musical map. Although he only lived here at Broadheath for a few years, Algar always loved and revisited his birthplace. It was his wish that his daughter Caris create a museum here to preserve the place for all to enjoy. My idea is that there is music in the air, music all around us, the world is full of it, and you simply take as much as you require, Sir Edward Elgar.
miserable looking lad, legs like drumsticks, nothing of a boy about him. One great characteristic, always doing something. When he stopped away from school, when he did about a third of the time, it was not merely to play truant. In studying the scores which first came into my hands were the Beethoven symphonies. They were difficult for a boy to get in Worcester. I, however, managed to get two or three, and I remember distinctly the day I was able to buy the pastoral symphony. I stuffed my pockets with bread and cheese and went out into the fields to study it. That was what I always did.